Hello gorgeous! <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. This look was kind of inspired by the movie Cruel Intentions, which I was watching recently on fullscreen.com. I'll put a link down below. It's a new video streaming service where you can watch movies and shows and a bunch of new ones that have YouTubers in them. You can watch from your phone, your tablet, your computer, wherever. I'm still on their free trial, but I will definitely be paying the $4.99 a month because they have so many other movies and shows that I love. Anyway, back to Cruel Intentions. I've seen this movie a hundred times in my life, if not more. But this time it really got me thinking about revenge and what better revenge than looking really, really good, right? So this video is all about how to look absolutely hot after a breakup, bad rumor, any kind of really embarrassing life event or moment. It's all about the comeback. So let's get started. So the first step is to start out with a clean, well-moisturized and exfoliated face so that your makeup can go on like butter, honey. I started by filling in my brows using a brow pen. This one's from Lancome. All it is is you need to apply them to clean, dry skin. To get it to look a little bit more natural though, I used a thin black liquid liner. This is from Kat Von D and it could create the thinnest, thinnest lines. Just add some dimension. You want to use a really light hand. Always use at least two different shades on your brows just to get the most natural result. If you're a blonde, try a dark brown liquid liner. Moving on to the skin, I'm using my Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus because it just works really well with my combination skin and lasts quite a while. When you want to look good, use something that you know works well on your skin. Don't start experimenting. Use what you know. So I started with a damp beauty blender sponge just to get a sheer and even finish all over the skin. And then I pick up a little domed concealer brush. This is from It Cosmetics. And I swirl around any areas where my pores might be a little bit larger, a little bit more obvious. Doing circular motions helps to really minimize their appearance. It just helps to conceal any kind of shadows and really cover the entire pore. So I recommend trying Trying that out. Next, I'm going to prime my lids to make sure that my eye makeup will not crease. In the movie Cruel Intentions, how the main characters were perceived meant everything to them. You've got to look as put together as possible. To keep things looking perfectly blended, start with a wash of a light eyeshadow all over the lid so you have a really smooth, dry surface to blend other shadows on top of. If your lids are too wet, product can cling to random spots and look splotchy. And if you're using darker shadows, which I'm going to be doing, look really weird. So I'm using soft matte neutral tones and I'm building up the intensity by layering on darker and darker browns just to give a more dramatic look. In the film, Sarah Michelle Gellar's character Catherine always has a lot of darkness around the eyes. I've also read that men rate women with smoked out eyes as more attractive. Isn't that so weird since they all say they like natural looks, but what the hell do they know? By the way, the brush I'm using here is Sigma. It's their E45 small tapered blending brush. It's perfect for creating a smoky eye. To highlight the inner corners, I'm using the shade Cosmic from Urban Decay. It's a very light, bright, sparkly white. It adds a touch of innocence and reminds me of Reese Witherspoon's character Annette. She was the master of killing people with kindness and she comes out as the winner in the end. Not to be a spoiler alert, but spoiler alert, I guess. Now I'm creating a perfect cat eye to give that feline effect. I think there's something very intimidating about a woman with a perfect wing liner. Sometimes intimidating is a good thing. I'm drawing a few lash-like strokes on my lower lash line and don't worry when we apply mascara on later, they won't be obvious at all, but they're going to give your lower lash line a thicker appearance. To clean up under the eyes and also brighten the area, I'm using Bye Bye Under Eye by It Cosmetics. I swear by this stuff. I'm going in an upside down triangle and blending out. This is going to help you look like you haven't lost any sleep and it'll also make your cheekbones look more prominent. Blending with a beauty blender is key to making everything look smooth. Just pounce away until you're satisfied. You can add some of a lighter concealer down the center of your nose to make it look slimmer, like maybe you got a nose job. Listen, honey, you gotta keep them guessing. Mystery can be a very powerful weapon. Now I'm baking underneath the eyes and the center of my face to lock everything in and just add the, a touch of extra brightness. I explain this process in much more detail in a video, which I'll link for you down below. But while that sits, you can tell your enemies to take several seats because if they think you'd ruin your pricey designer mascara crying over them, they gotta be crazy. Expensive mascara, though, is never enough. Throw on some lashes, too. Always, always, always throw on a lash. Now we can dust off that crazy powder underneath our eyes and finish up the rest of the face. 
Notice I didn't powder the entire face. You don't want to look dusty. No one's jealous of a dusty, you know what. You want to look like you're glowing with satisfaction because the people that don't like you never want to see you happy. Allow me to prescribe some Anastasia Beverly Hills So Hollywood Highlighter. Dust some of that on top of anywhere where you want to catch the light. And I really do mean anywhere. More on that later. I'm going to do a little bit of contouring along the cheekbones and jawline, just enough to make people think maybe you've lost some weight, but not so much that you look like you really care that much. And I always like to go over with a beauty blender just to bl blur out any of those like more stubborn lines. Put on your blush. I'm going for my go-to Tarte in the shade Celebrated because that's exactly what you're going to be after you're done slaying everybody with your fabulousness. <laughs> for the lips, one is never enough. I started out with Lipland's Reezy Liquid Lipstick and then filled in the center with this lighter shade by Anastasia Beverly Hills called Naked because guess what your ex will never get to see you as again? Mm -hmm. A little bit of gloss on top or a lot. Guys hate gloss, that's why I stay single. But also it makes your lips look really hydrated and let that be a reminder that you are not thirsty. If you have any exposed skin, do yourself a favor and slather on some of this Lorac bronzing lotion to make you look like you came back from vacation. And as I said, put that highlighter anywhere along the collarbones, the shoulders, anywhere you want to catch light extra. And I've always said this, but everybody needs a good revenge dress, like a go-to revenge dress. Here is mine. I showed you it in my bombshell haul, and I'll link that down below in case you missed it. The necklace I'm wearing is the Ferris Lariat by Who Is Kyle Moon. And this is the final look. When you're not out slaying, though, fullscreen.com is a great way to pass your time. Links to lots of things down below. Good luck, not like you'll need it. And as always, I look forward to talking to you again very, very soon. Bye.